Hi, I'm Reid, this is Crayland Publishing, and today we're talking about using psychology for better characters. Now we always need to improve our skills with characterization. We always do, we always will. Because creating realistic, interesting, and engaging characters is in many ways the height of the DM's art, and getting better at being a DM is not a process that ends. And conceiving, noting down, and performing a character, perhaps over many, many sessions, it's what a lot of narrative DMs, which is DMs who are mainly focused on the game experience as a storytelling experience, is what we live for. Uh, making a really, really strong PC that other PCs can anticipate and discuss and gossip about, that is the height of the narrative player's ambition as well, to create a, a PC that's so real, so exciting, and so strong that other people react to that particular character the players react, not just the, the other PCs. That's incredible. That's what loads of us are looking for. But making a fully rounded, rich, living character isn't all that easy. Otherwise, everyone would be a super great writer. Breaking free of cliches and archetypes, especially if you want to be inventive and unique and really bring your own creations to life, that's hard too, because cliches and archetypes work really, really well. If you do a mean southern placement, you ain't from around here, boy doesn't require any thought and players will immediately understand it and hate it and that's it you don't have to do any more work and that's you know that's fine if you make a wounded creature that has a unique yoda-esque talking pattern or any kind of you know sort of cutesy talking pattern like, i love your human pcs will die for it they will love it if you make a haughty princess you'll probably get a lot of sexism but you know you will immediately have a oh she needs to be taken down a peg and if you make a Falstaffian, ah, uh, heroes, come, drink beer with me and wench, players will always like a character like that because it's easy, easy, easy to understand them and it's easy, easy, easy to write them. But creating complex characters with inner lives that you could imagine existing outside of the game, now that requires really getting into a character's mentality. But thankfully, there is a science of understanding the human mind, sort of, and it's called psychology. Now, psychology is ultimately looking to create a map of human behaviors, especially relating to how we relate to one another. And it's looking for models that can predict certain behavior. Now, you probably know at least one of these models, the Maya Briggs, the INTF, J, E, N, T, P, all that sort of business. Now, are models like this a good and respected scientific idea? I presume so. I don't know, though. I'm not a psychologist. Is it a useful way to think about characters? Yeah, totally. So before we go on, <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of place to say, I'm not a psychologist. I don't know really anything about psychology. I'm just a man who reads a lot and likes elf games and likes to make cool characters in elf games. So we're just keeping it on that level. That's all we're talking about. So, but let's talk about the Mybriggs personality types. Let's talk about the models and what it can bring to us. So you probably know the Mybriggs. It's been very popular with a lot of my friends, a lot of my nerdy friends who really, really like to categorize things. And it signs four categories, introversion or extroversion, sensing or intuition, thinking or feeling, judging or perceiving. And so already you, that's a character sheet. And in gamer style, you could make up an NPC worksheet and actually stat that out. If you're a bard, you might have 15 extroversion, 10 sensing, 13 perception. Um, and make that out of 18, make that just another kind of stat. Or if you need to improvise someone, just decide which of the binary pairs you're picking and roll. And you've got insight into an NPC. Uh, I rolled a three on a d6. You are introverted. Okay, he's shy. Um, I rolled a sensing or intuition. I rolled a t intuition. Okay, well, this guy's going to be quite careful and watching. So immediately you have insight into an NPC. And if you don't like the Maya Briggs, you might use the Hexaco system of personality typology. Uh, Hexaco is an acronym. You have honesty, humility, emotionality, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness to experience. So again, immediately you have stats that you can stat out a personality with. Do you want your character to be open to experiences? I.e. they might be flirtatious. They might be fun to be around. They might be really, really addicted to something and continuously, you know, getting into troubles with drug and alcohol problems. That would be that their openness to experience, their hexaco stat goes up way at the end. Honesty, humility, just, just generally being likable, being someone who doesn't have any problems giving credit to other people, which are just generally things that we like 
in other people. So if you have a character who you think is going to be a real bastard Darth Vader type, you don't give them a high stat there. Conscientiousness. Are they a planner? Are they a schemer? No, no conscientiousness. Trait theory, which is one that I really like actually, has broad categories and then subcategories. So psychoticism involves creativity, but it links creativity to aggression and aloofness. Agreeableness is trust, humor, and modesty, and so on. Now, it might be a lot more work to do this kind of carefully going through and working out all the levels of you know, 12 or 15 or 18 or 20, whatever, uh, different kinds of personality types. Don't worry about it. Just be aware of it. Think about it. Map it out. Or maybe just having a list of human personality traits in front of you will really, really work. And one of the things I like personally about trait theory is that because you've got a lot of uh, subcategories, you might see an emerging kind of um, complexity happen because you can then have character traits that can clash and combine with one another. A cruel person might have a self spot. Maybe they like kids. Maybe they like dogs. Or a kind person might have a bit of trauma that makes them cruel in certain situations. I will never forgive orcs for what they did to my husband. That sort of thing. Humans are very good at having empathy with other humans. It is hard to shut that off, and that goes bad ways. Baddies to us, and us towards baddies. So if you look for things when you're doing your characterization that your players might like in baddies, and traits that might distance them from their allies, and that comes up, I think, very, very easily in trait theory. A creative person can be a very, very magnetic personality type. A cult leader, for example, or a stand-up comedian. So those are both traits that um, have... Dark sides, bad sides, good sides as well. And if you make up your NPCs as a matrix, as a worksheet, you can literally chart out those kinds of paradoxes. What traits are in opposition to one another? A wild man, a crazy man might have an aggression stat of 18, but a shyness stat of 18 too. How do they work together? Maybe the aggression is to deal with shyness, or maybe his shyness is because he hates his hair trigger temper and he, he just... Ah, he just stays away from people because he knows he gets it wrong. So immediately, this kind of technique is getting results. The local baroness might be very aloof, but very warm. Perhaps she's a really, really nice person who's simply incredibly good at having a regal presence in public, always very formal. But if you get past that, she's an attentive and kind friend. So look around for personality tests. There are loads online. They're very, very popular. Uh, read books. Read psychologytoday.com. This isn't you learning about psychology, though. It's just about you getting some techniques to become a better designer. But this is the part of the video I'm really excited about. For bad guys, there's another part of psychology that we can look at, and that is the personality disorder. Now, we used to use words like psychopath and sociopath. We don't anymore, or at least much, much less. And we just say that people have got an antisocial personality disorder. Now, there's loads of them. You should go and look them up. There's many, many ways that they manifest. Sometimes you're just endlessly defiant. Sometimes you're literally unable to have fun, or sometimes your emotions are utterly uncontrollable. But if there's one sort of underlying issue with what personality disorders are, it's that people who have them don't care about other people. The conscience is either missing or barely there. It's just that little voice in your head that says, don't do that. That will hurt someone. They don't care about it. So if you point out to the bad guy that they desire to steal all the dragon souls or to raise up the elder gods or to unleash the red plague that that's bad and that people will suffer, they won't care. It just doesn't occur to them to care. The ability to not care about other people is very, very powerful. It frees you so utterly from social conventions. It makes you able to go after your own goals in ways that other people consider absolutely viciously ruthless. Now, bear in mind that this does not mean that you immediately turn into a Nietzschean overman the second that you get a personality disorder. There are comorbidities that come along with them. For example, when people are kids, they tend to bully, they tend to steal, they tend to get in a lot of trouble very early because they don't have any skills to control themselves. Uh, impulse control is always going to be a problem for, the, for these gats. Uh, addictions, anxieties, which are just certain emotions completely out of control, that's an anxiety. They get them. Narcissism is very common as well, to the point where they refuse to admit that anyone is good as them. And that's, you know, that's dangerous. That's especially dangerous if you're looking to create a bad guy in a role-playing game. They tend to massively misunderstand other people's motivations. And sometimes 
They are just sadistic. They're just mean bastards. They like to see people suffer, and they can't help but try to make people suffer. And remember, we want contrast. We want these kinds of big personality types with big flaws in them. Your villain might be utterly ruthless, completely unwilling to stop any of his actions under any circumstances, but be paranoid that the people helping them are against them. They might be perfectly capable of horrible atrocities, just killing hundreds of people for no reason, but they might be upset by the idea that someone might not like them. They might be completely malicious, completely unable to resist their impulses to hurt other people, but they're terribly, terribly lonely. And best of all, these people are quite theatrical. They love to impress. They love to be thought of as impressive people. They want to be the smartest, the cleverest, the sexiest, the richest, the, all that stuff. They need you to think it. It feeds them. And that is, to my mind, there's your dramatic monologue. There's you wearing a fantastic cool cape that you're swanning around in all the time. Bad guys want to be seen. Bad guys want to be known. And bad guys want to be impressive. That's their psychology. So I think this video was long enough, even though I could talk about this stuff forever, I, I love this stuff. This is, to me, the juice of uh, being a DM. So, but there you go, shop around for different personality tests, see what works for you, what you find gives you the best results. Play around with the worksheets for your character's mentalities and emotions, especially looking for contrasts. And as a DM, you'll know that you do well when the players at the table make plans regarding how they understand the psychology of their enemies and their allies based on their personality type. So when the PC starts saying things like, no, 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 the Dark Lord has a bad temper, we can bait him. No, 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 my queen is far too formal. That was not her. That's when you're doing things right. And when other PCs are reacting to your character, not you, making jokes about them, being affectionate towards them, talking about their personality quirks and their flaws, that's when you're doing things right. And that's when you're well on the way to creating really, really lively and fascinating PCs and NPCs alike. Sorry I spoke a bit funny today, my MS is playing up a little bit. Anyway, please like, please share, please tell your friends, please subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye bye.